Powerful words. Our audience, of course, never pull their punches. Let's speak now to one of the most respected names in science. Dr. David Nabarro is the UK special envoy on COVID-19 to the World Health Organization. Dr. Nabarro, welcome to the show. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm very well. We can hear you loud and clear and we appreciate you're a busy man. Thanks for your time. Our text poll question of the day to our audience is as follows. Should Bojo cancel Crimbo? Now, I think I think you, you, you're you across the vernacular enough to know exactly what that means. Do you think yeah. the prime minister has to look again at the idea that over five days, three households can meet up in one place? Thank you, Mark. So here's my request, actually not so much to the prime minister, but to the people of Britain and the people of Europe. Is uh, Could you everybody make your own mind up about how you want to deal with this? And while you're making your mind up, I'd like to tell you that this virus uh, is continuing to cause trouble and to surge back into people's lives in Europe, all over the continent. And if people come together and mingle and mix, particularly up close and particularly during this period in December, when it'll be cold, And so we'll be tempted to shut all the doors and keep everyone inside, light the fire. That's the time when this virus has a terrible habit of spreading. And what we know is that when we gather together like this, that after we've been all physical, then three to four weeks later, we will get a spike of cases. And the reason why I'm particularly concerned about it right now is that we didn't haven't had a big drop in numbers of cases during the last two or three weeks and we thought it would be quite big but it stayed high the numbers in in UK in Netherlands in France in Germany in Switzerland in Spain what this suggests to me is that there will be a big rebound if we are a bit careless And that rebound will come at the end of January and it won't be good. So it's up to us. And uh, I don't really think it should be laid uh, at the prime minister's doorstep. I think we ourselves have to make decisions for ourselves uh, how we want to go about this end of year festivities. Uh, We're going to have a vaccine. It'll be coming on board. I hope it'll be available for everybody who needs it towards the second half of of next year. Let's try not to see in the year with a lot of death and suffering due to the virus. Is that an endorsement, Dr. Nabarro, of the Prime Minister's blueprint for Christmas, which is more or less that that, that families and friends can exercise judgment with with a sort of ceiling of three households meeting up? I mean, is that is that satisfactory or are you sympathetic to the leader of the opposition and the British Medical Journal, who are urging a rethink about these freedoms for five days? Well, I I just what I hate is the notion that what we do is determined by rules set by government. Uh, You know, we're we're 11 months into this pandemic. And I think we're all of us getting the message that it actually is up to us. And um, I'm really not wanting to endorse any restrictions that are set by anybody. I'm wanting to go the other way and to say, I think each one of us has to be super careful not to be contributing to the spread of the virus. And that may well mean that we decide we want to have a different kind of Christmas this year, but it should be us, not somebody else who makes the decision. I'm being kind of straight with you because I can't see any alternative except to tell you what I really think. And what I really think is that on these kinds of issues, us as humans have to be able to sort it out. There's enough information around. In the end, it's up to us to decide. Uh, your, Your instincts, I think, are right and shared by the vast bulk of our audience, certainly via the text poll question of the day in which just 19% of people think that Christmas should be, in inverted commas, 
cancelled. Uh, however, yeah. does this uh, does this reflect a sort of a wider view about all restrictions, Dr. Nabarro? Now, we're all none of us here at this radio station or I think in the general discourse across the country. I don't think anyone is advocating that we let rip or that we suddenly have yeah. a street party and start hugging each other all and sundry. Um, but yeah. do, you, do you have some concerns similarly for the tiered restrictions, given the fact that that doesn't really rely on people's common sense and doing the right thing? Well, I've always thought that when you get a spike of cases coming in a particular part of the world, at some point, it is necessary to restrict movement. That's simply because when you've got a spike, you will have higher incidence in that area and you want to stop people traveling out and taking the virus elsewhere. So I'm somebody who believes that from time to time, movement restrictions have to be introduced as part of the public health response. But that it's, that's about as far as I go. And I, I think in more general terms, I'm interested in people taking as much responsibility as they can, but I'm not saying that that means we just do what we like and just don't bother about the virus. I mean, it me, sounds to me, is... Dr. Nabarro, it sounds to yes, me sir. that you're advocating a Swedish approach, perhaps. not Maybe not letter, letter for letter on, on, on Sweden's approach. And we know that they... Uh, they they took uh, their eye off the ball when it came to uh, yeah. the care the care homes early in the pandemic, for which they've apologised. But generally, mm. they kept the schools open. Um, they haven't had national lockdowns. People have washed their hands, worked at home mm. at possible. But it's been it's been discretionary. Is that is that the way to go um, into the new year? I, I, you know, I'm not in government, and uh, I'm trying to be super careful. I, my ideal is that humanity as a race decides what it's going to do about this virus, which is a threat to every single person on this planet. Um, and we're going to have to do everything possible to hold it at bay. And to do that, we need to be really well organised and really responsible. Now, I suppose if you're saying to me, am I condoning irresponsible behaviour? Am I saying take away any of the restrictions and just everybody does what they like? No, I'm not. I'm condoning responsible behaviour by people who are acting in their own best interests and the best interests of their societies. Uh, and I, I really do think that that means that most of us who are concerned about this virus are really wanting to have a very, very low key Christmas this year. Indeed. There's just no point. I, 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 think you, I, I think you're right. And I think everybody that I know in my social group and in my family is mindful of older relatives, those in vulnerable groups. If you're 95 and have bad asthma, um, you're probably going to have a quiet Christmas by choice because there isn't anybody in the land or, or in most parts of the planet know that, 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 that don't understand the nature of this virus, Dr. Nabarro. Highly infectious, extremely dangerous for vulnerable groups. A final question and quick uh, thought for you, though. Um, you mentioned it's a threat to every single person on the planet. Well, it's a threat in terms of transmission, isn't it? But the recovery rate is extraordinarily high. It's not the bubonic plague, is it? It's not SARS. Is there a sense in which governments across the world have overreacted, uh, given the fact that really it's just the protection of health services that's the, the main, main threat to everyone else? This is such a difficult disease to deal with. If it killed more people, like if it killed 10% of the people it affected, then control would be straightforward. I mean, the difficult thing as far as I'm concerned is not so much what it does in terms of life or death. It's the long-term damage done, by pe done to people who recover slowly. You must have heard about this. This long COVID is a horrible thing. And it seems like one in 20 to one in 30 people who get COVID have the long illness. And we just don't know the full story about it. So I'm saying, for me, the virus is dangerous, cunning, stealthy, and really one to avoid. And if you possibly can avoid getting it, even if you're young and fit, do avoid it. Because some people who are young and fit are still struggling to cope with shortness of breath and tiredness many weeks after being ill. It's not trivial. It's not mild. It's got nasty, insidious consequences, and we all need to be careful about it. 
and avoid it if we possibly can. The biggest names in science speak to talk radio. My thanks to Dr. David Nabarro, UK special envoy on COVID-19 to the World Health Organization. What are your views, Dr. Nabarro, suggesting that we as a population should decide the best and safest kind of Christmas 